New Kids on the Block, Changing the Way Artificial Intelligence Research Happens. I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet and Tech Republic, and joining me is David Cox, Director of the MIT IBM Watson AI Lab. Welcome, David. Thank you. Nice to be here. What is the mission of the MIT IBM collaboration? How does the Watson AI Lab differ from typical industry academic partnerships? Yeah, we're actually a pretty unique uh, animal in the space of industry academic collaborations. So we're, we're focused on AI, obviously, but we're, we're really focused on fundamental AI. What kinds of breakthroughs do we need to be able to get AI into more places in enterprise, more places in our lives? And to do that, we, we partnered with MIT, which is one of the great educational institutions uh, in the world and particularly in the space of AI. And we formed a new model with them. So we don't simply fund research with MIT, uh, but rather we, we work together collaboratively. So all of our projects are jointly conceived and jointly executed between IBM researchers and MIT faculty. And what we do is we come together and we really think about what would move the needle, what, what fundamental breakthroughs would really change how far AI can get into every part of our lives. Why was Cambridge, Massachusetts selected as the lab's home? So uh, Cambridge really is uh, in many ways a, a perfect place to have this lab. Obviously MIT is here and MIT is not gonna move. We can't move MIT, uh, but there's a sense in which we're really sort of natural partners. Uh, so we're both East Coast institutions. And as we know, you know Silicon Valley is a, is a huge player in this space. Um, and, you know, universities like Stanford and Berkeley are, are, are clearly major uh, players in AI, and it makes sense for the Facebooks and the Googles of the world to partner with them. Uh, IBM's an East Coast company. It's, it's part of our DNA. You know, we, you know, there's a saying that in Silicon Valley, they move fast and break things. Um, you know, and we try and move fast too, but uh, breaking things really isn't an option uh, for, for our customers at IBM. We're really about responsible, thoughtful innovation in AI. And there's a sense in which, uh, you know, we, we, we vibe with MIT in, in a very deep way. And we have a long history with MIT as well. So if you actually go back to the very beginning of, of the history of, of AI, the term was actually coined at a workshop at Dartmouth that was organized by IBM researchers and MIT faculty. The IBMers were building the first practical computers and the MIT faculty were dreaming about how to use them. So we have this long, deep history. Uh, so locating here in Cambridge, partnering with MIT, makes a ton of sense. What are the attributes of a viable project and how are the projects submitted for consideration? So we look for a couple things in these projects. One is we want the ambition level to be extremely high. So that we were not looking for small incremental progress. We really are looking at things that will looking for things that will change many different fields. We're also looking for close collaboration. So we, we don't, again, we don't simply want to fund research at MIT. I mean, we, we obviously bring money to the table and we allow MIT researchers to fund their students and their postdoctoral fellows and the faculty. But we really are looking for those cases where we have a deep one-to-one -one relationship where our researchers and MIT faculty and students are working shoulder to shoulder uh, working on code together, uh, you know, developing IP together. So we, we do also look for that personal relationship. And in many cases, we have uh, researchers at IBM who have longstanding collaborations with MIT people. Um, and, but at the same time, a lot of these collaborations are brand new. And, and, and we really are looking for evidence that they work together and, and that they're really going to do exciting things together, that they have complementary expertise, complementary vision. Uh, and, and that's what we're looking for. What are some of the current projects that the lab's working on? So we have a number of projects. So we have a portfolio of about 50 projects that are running at any given moment. Uh, and projects come on and come off as time goes on. Uh, there are a few areas that we're really excited about. So one area is around neural symbolic hybrid AI models. So as you might know, the, the, the latest, some of the most exciting, uh, you know, a lot of the excitement around AI today has been driven by deep learning. So deep learning is, um, in many ways, the evolution of artificial neural networks, which has been around for a very long time uh, and has been tremendously successful lately because we have lots of data and we have lots of compute to finally make uh, neural networks work really well. Um, but at the same time, neural networks aren't the complete solution for, for a lot of things, we believe. So uh, some of the projects we're working on are interesting because they bring together another old tradition in AI called symbolic AI which, which it, it, rather than, than uh, 
then working with neural networks works by actually having symbols and knowledge and representing that knowledge, being able to operate on that knowledge. And it's, it's interesting because it, it dates back, uh, it's contemporaneous with the original development of the early neural networks. Uh, but in many ways, uh, it fell by the wayside the same way that neural networks fell by the wayside over the decades. And now as neural networks are resurging, we're asking, well, can we bring back some of these good ideas from symbolic AI, dust them off, blend them in interesting new ways with neural networks and drive, project, uh, drive progress forward? How do you go about engaging MIT students and how do they contribute? Right, so we located ourselves in Kendall Square, not by accident. We, we did this because geography is destiny. So we have an open door policy with, with MIT graduate students. So graduate students from MIT uh, and undergraduate students are, can come and go freely from an IBM facility. Uh, that's a little bit of a change up from how uh, many IBM facilities have traditionally run, but we really see this as an open community. And meanwhile, our researchers uh, freely move back and forth to MIT and they attend uh, lab meetings uh, for groups at MIT, they mentor students. Uh, we interact with the undergraduate community. We just sponsored uh, Hack MIT, which is one of the largest undergraduate hackathons in the world. Uh, and we, we went there and we uh, partnered with a, a program called Call for Code, which was looking for uh, uh, basically uh, students to build projects that would help for disaster relief. What goals or milestones are next for the lab? Yeah, so uh, obviously uh, any time a, a, a company devotes as much money as IBM has devoted, and I should say uh, IBM's committing a, a close to a quarter billion dollars over 10 years to have this relationship with, with MIT, uh, of course they're going to want to look for some kind of uh, some, something to come back, right? They're going to they're be some uh, milestones and metrics that, that will be measured on. Uh, we're looking for a couple things. Uh, we're looking for uh, academic papers. We're looking to actually to engage in a deeper way with the academic community. And for the academic community, papers really are the, the currency of the realm. Uh, and IBM Research is a 5,000 person research organization, publishes broadly, patents broadly. Um, we're sort of the new kids on the block. We're, we're very new. We're um, you know, we're in many ways the tip of the spear of IBM's AI strategy. We're looking at that long range fundamental breakthrough uh, sort of generation. Uh, so we're obviously gonna be generated, uh, sorry, we're gonna be judged uh, in part on our ability to drive those innovations, to be producing papers in the top conferences, to be, um, you know, to be having research results that the community is talking about. Uh, IBM's a leader in patents. Uh, you know, IBM patents you know, has over 9,000 patents a year. Uh, 1,400 of them are in AI. Uh, we're, obviously, IBM's gonna look to us to be generating IP uh, that, that's, that's gonna enable IBM to build products for its customers. And, and ultimately, we're gonna be, you know, as, as a meta point over all of this, uh, we're really gonna be judged on our impact. To what extent are we changing the course of, of AI research? To what extent are we changing how AI is done? To what extent are we changing how our customers do business uh, by leveraging this fundamental AI capability? David Cox, director of the MIT IBM Watson AI Lab, the new kids on the block who are helping push forward some of the most interesting research. Thank you so much, David, for joining us. If somebody wants to connect with you, how can they go about doing that? Uh, you can search for my name and IBM on LinkedIn. All right. Thanks again so much. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic, or maybe go to my website, tanyahall.net. I've got links to all my social sites. Thanks for watching.